In this video, let's take a look at testing pointer interactions, more specifically mouse interactions. To get us started, I have set up some code behind the scenes. Let me walk you through the changes. In the components folder, I've created a new folder called counter. Within the folder, I've created a file called counter.tsx, which contains the component code. At the moment, we have a state variable count initialized to zero, which is displayed using an h1 tag and a button called increment, which increments the count value by one every time it is clicked. Really simple, as you can see. Our goal now is to write tests for this component. Let's begin by creating the test file. Within the counter folder, counter.test.tsx. At the top, make the necessary imports. Import render and screen from testing library and import the counter component. Now let's write the first test to ensure the component renders correctly. Since we have done this on a number of occasions already, I'm going to be fairly quick. Describe block. The name is counter. And the second argument is a function. We are going to define a test whose name is renders correctly. And the second argument is a function. Within the function body, we render the counter component, get hold of the count element, and expect the count element to be in the document. Next, we find the increment button The role is button, name is increment, and we expect increment button to be in the document. Save the file and our test passes. Hopefully this is all familiar to you. If it isn't, please do watch the previous sections before proceeding. For our next test, we're going to test the initial state of the component. So test renders a count of zero, where we render the counter component again, find the count element, the role is heading, and we expect count element to have text content zero. Make sure zero is a string. Save the file and our test passes. The h1 tag renders a count value of zero by default. Now that we have both the tests out of the way, let's focus on testing user interactions. Begin by importing the user event package at the top. Import user from testing library slash user event. Now let's write our test. The name is renders a count of one after clicking the increment button. The second argument is a function. Within the function, render the counter component just like the previous tests. Next, find the increment button. I'm going to copy paste this line from the first test. Now though, what we have to do is simulate user clicking on this button. This is where the user event library comes into picture. First, create an instance of user event. For that, before the render method, call user.setup. Now, after finding the button element, we can call user.click passing in the increment button element. 
But what you should know is that all user event APIs are asynchronous. So we add async to the function and await the user click. Now that the button has been clicked, we can assert that the heading now renders a value of one. So find the element using get by role and then expect that element to have text content of one. Make sure the argument is a string. If you now save the file, our test passes. Hopefully, handling mouse click interaction makes sense with the test we have written here. If it does, it's time for a quick exercise. I want you to make the following test pass. Test renders a count of two after clicking the increment button twice. And of course, we have an arrow function. Let me know in the comment section if you were able to do that. Now that you've understood what it means to test a mouse interaction, let me go over a few slides which talk about pointer interactions in a bit more detail. The first thing you should know is that click is not a pointer API. It is a convenience API that internally calls the pointer API. Having said that, Convenience APIs are what you typically use when writing tests. For mouse interactions, apart from click, there is double click and triple click. For mouse movement, there is hover and unhover. Hover and unhover can be used when testing appearance and disappearance of tooltips or when testing hover styles applied to an element. Please make a note of all these methods as they are required when testing user interactions. Apart from these convenience APIs, we can also call a lower level pointer API. Let me walk you through a few examples. Pointer accepts an object as argument and we specify the keys property. In this first example, a left mouse button click is simulated. This second example simulates a left click followed by a right click. You can also pass in a string if keys is the only argument to the function. Now in order to press a button without releasing it, you can suffix the button name with the greater than sign. On the other hand, for just releasing a previously pressed button, you can prefix with a forward slash. Unless you have a use case for using the pointer API, my suggestion would be to always rely on the convenience APIs as they are much easier to read and write. But this is pretty much about mouse interactions when writing tests with React testing library. Let me quickly summarize what we have learned. In this video, we came across the counter component which increments the count value on click of a button. Naturally, we need to test that behavior for which we relied on the user event library. We imported user at the top and called user.setup right before render. We then found the increment button and invoked user.click passing in the button element. We learned that all APIs from user event are asynchronous and hence added the async await keywords. This helped us assert the behavior a user would see when interacting with the component. We also learned that dot .click is a convenience API along with double click and triple click. For a lower level API, we have the pointer API which accepts the mouse button. You can suffix a greater than sign to ensure a pressed button is not released and you can use a forward slash suffix to release a previously pressed button. If this is clear, join me in the next video where we will learn about keyboard interactions along similar lines. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.